What's going on guys? Just a quick video inside of Affinity Publisher just to show you how you can apply these drop caps inside of any of your paragraphs. So as you can see here, I have these in different colors with a different font throughout the document. And I'll show you just how easy it is to do this. So first of all, I'm gonna go over to this other file so we can start from scratch and I can show you how you put this together. So on the screen in front of us is a project file I quickly put together just to show you guys how this works. And this kind of effect looks really good on this type of project if you guys are maybe making yourself a fairy tale book. And something like this is really easy to put together and looks quite professional. All it is is a title at the top here, a few images in the foreground as well as a background and just a bit of text. I do have the text wrapping around these images, which if you guys are unsure how to do that, I will link another tutorial up in the top corner now. And that will walk you through the steps to set up this process. However, moving on with the tutorial, what we want to do first of all is decide where we're going to start putting our drop caps. So we're going to head over to the left hand page and I'm going to select this text box right here. Then I'm going to make my way over to the right hand side inside of my paragraph section. If you guys aren't seeing your paragraph section over here, just simply head up to your window menu on the top menu bar, make your way down towards the bottom to where you have text and just make sure that you have paragraph checked then you will also have access to this paragraph section. So inside of here, we have a whole list of different things that we can do. It's just a case of opening up these drop down menus. But the one that you want to look for is right here, which says drop caps. So go ahead and just open that one up. Then inside of here, we've got a couple of options. First of all, we want to make sure that we enable this. So if we go ahead and we just enable, then underneath that, we have the height in lines. And what this means is that it's going to make these characters grow to be the specific size in lines. So I'll quickly demonstrate what I mean by that. So if I go ahead and change that from one to two, that now puts that O right there across two lines, or we could do that by three, four, five, whichever number you guys like. However, one thing to note is that if you go ahead and you just select the text box just like that, and you go and enable that, is going to put a letter across every single one of your paragraphs, which may not be the effect you are going for. So we'll go ahead and just turn that off and I'll go and do the same on the other side. So just turn off that enable. And instead we're gonna go and apply this to specific paragraphs. So I'm gonna start right here at the top and all we've got to do is just select the letter at the beginning. So I'll get that I right there just by moving my cursor over that and highlighting it. Then we're gonna head back over to our paragraph menu and we'll turn on enable. So now that's just enabled that one character. And just like before, we can decide how many lines we want this to spread across. So I'll go ahead and maybe use three. Then underneath that, we have the distance to text and that is gonna be how close the text is to that character. So I do recommend just moving that a little bit, maybe just to one millimeter. So you can see you guys can have that as far away as you like. But for me, I'll put that around one millimeter. And what else we can do is change the color of this font by coming into our color wheel and just go and find something different. So for me, I like to keep it kind of consistent with the colors on the page. So I'll go and sample a few colors from these images. So first of all, I'll start with maybe the red in that title. So I'll go and get that red and I'll give that the color to the eye. What I want to do next is change the font of this and you guys can have any font that you like. So I'll go up to the top here on the left hand side and I'll just choose this font right there because I think that looks pretty good. Then it's really just a case of doing it across the other paragraphs. So you can see how easy that was to do. So it's really just a case now going through all your paragraphs and just changing them to be the same. So once again, with the T selected over here on there, I'll make my way back over to the paragraph menu, turn on enabled, and I'll put that across three lines as well. Go ahead and just put that one millimeter in the distance. This time around, I think I'll sample maybe that purple over there on her dress. So I'll go and grab that right there. Go ahead and just change the color. Once again, we'll change the font to match that one up there. So I will go to that one right there. And what you may notice if you guys are also wrapping your text around your images is when you go and change these, they may start moving your text around where you don't really like the look of it, such as down here where it says cryptic clues. So really what you need to do in order to fix that is either just move your image around just to get the text where you want it, or maybe just resize that so it'll start moving your text across the page. So it's just a case of copying that same process across the entire design. So if you guys want to go that one step further with your design and make this look a little bit more artistic, then there's another trick that we can do. So to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is go inside of this text box and I want to actually turn this one off. So I'll go ahead and just highlight that. 
make sure I turn off enable just to put that back to normal. Then where it says in, I want to get rid of the I, so I'll go ahead and just delete that. Come off that text box altogether. Then I'm going to grab the artistic text tool, which is this one right here on the left hand side. Just going to drag that out to a rough size I'm happy with. I'll go ahead and just use the same font that we've already used, which was that one right there. And I'll just write in a capital I. Then I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to put this roughly into position. So I want this across the three lines as well. So somewhere around there. I'll bring this over. Then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the text around this. So if we go up to our text wrap settings at the top and we'll choose the option right here that says tight. Then just at the bottom where it says distance from text, I'm going to go ahead and just change that to one millimeter all the way around. Just so it's consistent with the rest of our design. Go ahead and close that. And now we've got the same kind of effect that we had just down here and of course the rest of the document. However, this time around, because we now have this on its own layer, what we can do is add some effects to this, such as maybe a drop shadow or a gradient or different kind of effects. So all we've got to do is make our way over to the layers on the right hand side. So we'll select layers. We'll come down towards the bottom to where we have effects. And first of all, I'm going to choose outer shadow. And I'll give that a radius and an offset of maybe five pixels just to see how that looks. And I'll just come off that for a moment and deselect it so we can see it. So that looks pretty good. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. So already that stands out a lot better than the other one. And of course, we can do a lot more with this in terms of the effects. We just go back into our effects menu and we can maybe make that 3D if you want to try that effect. Or we can put a bevel and emboss on that just to see how that looks. There's a number of different things you can try in here. Just get as creative as you like. And of course, we can change the color from it being a solid red to maybe putting a gradient over that. So I'll go ahead and just go into my gradient menu. I'll go and sample a few colors, maybe the pink one right there. We'll choose that one. And on the other side, we'll go and sample a darker pink. So maybe that color right there. I'll go and choose that one. And now you see we set up a gradient which is going to match that carriage just down at the bottom. So there are a number of different things that you can do in terms of making that look a little bit more artistic. And of course, if you don't like what you have done, you can always come back into the effects and turn off the effects that you didn't like. And this still remains editable all the time. So you can come in, you can change the color of that if you like for something a little bit different. This will be your guys design and your preference. But that is my quick tutorial on using drop caps inside of your document. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, then please hit that like and subscribe button. I'm currently not far from 8,000 subscribers as of July 2024. And my personal goal is to reach a milestone of 10,000 subscribers this year. And that is something that you guys can all help me with. If you did like the video, just go ahead and hit the subscribe. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.